Sure. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our uh, monthly Pressbooks product update. We just did the intros, and I'm going to start by just kind of giving an overview on what's been happening with Pressbooks results. Um, if you're new to Pressbooks results or that term isn't familiar to you, what it is is an assignment helper that lets instructors get more insight into student learning. So the basic concept how it works is if you have a Pressbooks book, you can create H5P activities. And these would be like interactive quizzes and other kinds of um, learning uh, interactive opportunities, and you embed them in your book. If you use Pressbooks results, then you take that book, you integrate it with your learning management system. And then when students launch the link from the LMS, they do the activities and a score, a grade is sent back to the grade book. And we've built a, what's called the chapter results viewer. And it will show the instructor and the student details of what they scored on each of the individual activities within a larger chapter. So the idea is that it's gonna help provide visibility into who's doing the reading. It's gonna provide more motivation for students to actually check their understanding, check their knowledge, because they know the instructor will see how they did. And then the instructor can see overall how well the course did on a given chapter or in given assignments. So it can help them focus what they cover in class the next time they meet or other kinds of things like that. Uh, just earlier this week, we made a short introduction video. You can watch me explain it on video if you want. Uh, it's about seven and a half minutes long and it's linked there. Um, I can't remember. I've tried to paste the link so I could paste it in the chat right now. And let me see if I did that. No, I didn't. Okay, so I'll come back to that and I'll put the, the link to the video So since you don't have the slides uh, in a second. So uh, that's what Pressbooks Results is. And if you go to the next slide, Julie, um, we have been running a pilot. Uh, oh, actually, before I say that, this term, um, Pressbooks Results is available basically for people who want it to be early users in a pilot program. If you want to see what Pressbooks Results is like or experiencing yourself, Anyone can do that now. And we have demo courses, short demo courses in uh, the four major LMSs, in Canvas, in Bright, uh, D2L Brightspace, in Blackboard, and in Moodle. These demo courses would let anybody who wants to log into the course as a student, see what a course would feel like. There's a discussion forum. There's an opening title page. There's several graded Pressbooks chapters. And you can do the chapter. You can see the grade. You can experience the chapter results uh, viewer. You can get a, a flavor for what Pressbooks results feels like and, ex, and the experience as a student. Um, if you want to use the Canvas and Moodle course, they allow self-registration. The Blackboard and D12 Brightspace, we have to manually enroll you. So there's a request form that you can fill out to get added to those. Um, we're happy to let you or any of your instructors who want to try it out before they actually use it themselves, do it in the demo course. And there's a recording from earlier this month where we I led people through like a a webinar or a walkthrough of how to use the demo course and what it looks like in each LMS. So that's available for you or anybody who wants to try it before the next term starts. In terms of what's happening for the actual pilot, we have you know over 25 uh, institutions who are using Pressbooks results this term. I think there's somewhere between 35 and 40 instructors, maybe a, a little bit more that ended up using results in their courses. Uh, and there's a little over 3,000 students, we think, that are using Pressbooks results this term. Uh, the, the pilot is actually being used only in three of the four LMSs. The Moodle institutions ended up not using it this term, but um, that's what's happening right now. And we've been having regular check-ins with all of the pilot participants, that includes network managers sometimes, and the instructors who are teaching with it. Big picture, it's been going really well. It's, uh, we've learned a lot, instructors have learned a lot, and I can share on the next slide, some of the key kind of key, key takeaways so far, if you're able to go. To I think we're going to have um, Michelle is going to jump in and talk about. Uh, wait, are the yeah, Michelle is going to jump in and talk about the next part. Perfect, because I'll. You want me to introduce me thing or just hand it to Michelle? Uh, go ahead and uh, you go ahead and introduce this, and then you can. Okay. Hand uh, so part of the pilot, I guess we've been doing a couple of things. One, we've been having regular check-ins. And the other, we've been doing a series of instructor interviews, and Michelle has been leading those as the UX designer to understand in a bit more depth what instructors want and need from Pressbooks results. So I'll let Michelle talk about them since she's done the interviews. So sure. Thanks, Steele. Uh, so yes, we ran one-on-one -on -one interviews to really understand the experience of our instructors uh, of using results end-to-end. -end. So beginning with H5, building H5P activities, 
all through the process of bringing their content into the LMS and then using the material with students, we covered lots of parts of the journey. So some of the strengths that we heard were that instructors really appreciate being able to embed interactive activities throughout their content and are able to get value out of using their existing books. Uh, that pilot instructors feel confident creating H5P activities and use a variety of resources such as AI, online tutorials, interns, and other help to assist in H5P creation. Uh, deep linking is really well received. It's a seamless, smooth experience uh, integrating the Pressbooks material into their LMS. And some of the main challenges that we heard include the reliability of grade reporting is hugely improved, but still needs attention. At the time of the interviews, we were still in the process of getting our fix out for third party cookies implemented. So we have noticed that since then, there have been significantly less issues with grade reporting, but it could still be improved. Uh, next, instructors are really seeking visibility into students' responses in order to teach and intervene more efficiently. Um, uh, and that uh, users would really appreciate sort of intuitive uh, intuitiveness and ease of use for both instructors and students. Uh, we really recognize that some instructors have to train their students to find and complete specific activities to ensure the correct submission of answers. Uh, and then we can go to the next slide. Uh, some of the improvements that we have made so far, uh, I mentioned the third party cookie fix just uh, last slide. What that consists of is a notification that is sent to students, letting them know that there's a potential problem and allows them to adjust their settings before they attempt any H5P activities. Uh, we've also made an adjustment to the activity viewer. So now you can find a sum of the points from all of the activities in an assignment in a new totals column on the right hand side of the chart. Uh, and we've also made some general usability changes so we removed the last attempt as a grading option in the chapter configuration in Pressbooks. And we have also removed the assignment placement from the Canvas dynamic registration. So essentially there were two places that an instructor could launch the content selector, which caused confusion for at least one user. So we streamlined the process and only have one place where that is available. Uh, and then some things that we have in the works are some changes to the activity viewer, including displaying the active grading scheme for each assignment and changing the default display order to alphabetical by last name. Currently it's by first name. Uh, and that's not generally uh, the obvious choice. Uh, we are also working on displaying usage analytics for network managers so that they can see who, how, or where Pressbooks results is being used in their network, as well as providing more details about the individual student responses in the activity viewer. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Any questions for Michelle, or I think we have some of our tech team on as well about Pressbooks results improvements up to this point? All right, we will keep going. Um, we are now in the process of uh, wanting to uh, get, oh, Steele, please. So, Julie, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, but it is worth mentioning because there's a lot of network managers on this call. Um, you probably have received emails from us if this is relevant to you, but if you haven't yet configured your network, to, uh, configured LTI for your network, that's a necessary prerequisite to using Pressbooks results. So some of you have never set up an LTI connection between your network and the LMS. If that's the case, there's a much easier process than there was in the past, and we'd love to help support you do that. If you set up an LTI connection previously and already have it working, the new plugin has support for something called deep linking, which makes it way, way, way easier for instructors to find content and bring it into Pressbooks. We would love you to get the benefit and value from doing that. So if you've already set up your LTI connection, but deep linking is a new concept to you, please do get in touch with us so we can help you um, add support for deep linking, which will really improve the instructor experience. They don't have to download common cartridges and import them anymore. They can just do it directly from the LMS interface. So if you haven't done that, if that sounds like it might be you, you're not sure, please do email us at Premium Support and we'd love to help you get everything ready so that it's just smoother for, for people using LTI in the future. Okay. 
Thank you, Steele. And we'll talk a lot more about LTI in just a minute. Um, okay, so uh, we are now in the process of uh, identifying who is interested in using the Pressbooks results for the upcoming term. Um, we actually have a an online form that we would welcome instructors to fill out directly or network managers if you think you may have instructors who are interested. We'd like to know who's on the radar so that as we start uh, sending out information about um, training, information sessions, um, the kind of that that onboarding process, making sure that everybody that wants to use it has the LTI set up, any support around that, that that might be needed. Um, so all of those things are, are part of what we're trying to do. So we, I will post the link to this in the chat here. I can do that right now. Um, whoops, hold on. Okay. So that's the link to uh, this form. And so please feel free to share that with instructors or fill it out directly uh, if you're a network manager, but would like more information or if you have instructors who would like more info. Um, okay, any questions on, okay, Lauren, if you have an instructor participating now in fall term, I'm assuming it's, it's okay to have another instructor use it in winter term, absolutely. So, and in fact, in the check-ins that we do uh, next week, we have our next round of check-ins with pilot instructors. We're also interested if they want to continue. We'd like to know. Um, they they obviously won't have to do. You know, they they've been using it and and so forth. Um, we are going to have some improvements to documentation and 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 some of those kinds of things. We are planning to um, have a. a, a uh, kind of a support path, a, 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 a clear defined support path for instructors who um, are would love some tech assistance, that kind of thing. And so those are improvements that we'll be talking to everybody about. But if you want to add more instructors, we, that's exactly what we want to have happen. So thank you. All right. Uh, next, we will move on to our next topic if there's not more questions on that. Um, uh, so we, we've been getting some inquiries as we've been talking to folks about LTI, the integration piece, as well as about Pressbooks results. Um, we do have people who are not necessarily coming from uh, technology backgrounds. And so to say things like LTI and integration and deep linking, that is kind of its own special language. Um, and so we wanted to take a few minutes on our product update to just have a good conversation about what it is, why it matters, show, to, show you what it looks like, and just invite anybody that might have questions about this and how it works to, uh, to bring this to the table. So uh, John McLeod is going to be walking us through this part of our uh, conversation. So John, do you want me to drive or do you want uh, to take control? Yeah, might as well drive right now. Uh, okay. So uh, first, we wanted to go over some useful terms uh, when we're talking about LTI. And first off, uh, learning management system or an LMS on each campus, it might have a different name. It might some might call it Moodle, uh, Brightspace, Canvas, Blackboard, or you might have branded it on your campus. Uh, specific, uh, you know, at the University of Alberta, it used to be called iLearn. Um, so there might be a specific, but uh, one of these, usually one of these four providers is uh, the, providing a software application for your campus that helps organize, create, manage, and deliver educational programs. Another useful term is uh, learning tool interoperability. So that's what we're calling LTI. Um, this is what we're referring to. Uh, it's a technical standard that allows different learning tools to operate uh, between uh, the LMS and another uh, platform, another EdTech platform. Uh, the LTI standard is maintained by one EdTech, and our LTI integration, uh, that plugin, has been certified by one EdTech. Um, when we talk about integration, that's how different software systems work together to share data and a user experience and other things. So you could have uh, different types of integration, where, one where uh, you're uh, allowing single sign-on or data in integration where you're combining or sharing data from different sources. Um, so that 
could be our grade pass back uh, from your Pressbooks network and the H5P activities to the LMS. And then as well, deep linking, uh, that's some type of integration. So that's the ability to navigate to a specific page within Pressbooks or uh, a content item within the LMS. Um, so what benefits does the Pressbooks LTI integration provide? Number one, uh, it allows students and instructors to use Pressbooks inside your LMS. Uh, we have referred to it in the past as one click uh, to access for students. They just have to go to their uh, LMS course and you're providing the link to all the learning activities that they need. Uh, they don't have to go outside the LMS. It, it would produce and, and um, students would see their press book right within the LMS. Um, it links students directly to specific press books pages or activities from the LMS, and it makes it easier for students to find and access course materials. They eliminate the need for students to log into Pressbooks separately. So if you have a private book and, or you have an instructor who has a private book that they're working on, but they would like to use it with a class, um, they could send everyone um, a, a, an email inviting them to sign on as a subscriber on your Pressbooks network and students would have to sign on and, and keep that and they would get access to that material. Or you can load that uh, content into your LMS and the LTI signs those students in as subscribers and they can see all that private content without instructor having to make it publicly available if they're not ready to yet. And lastly, it enables Pressbooks results. So the LTI enables that grade pass back uh, from your Pressbooks network and the H5P activities to the grade book. Now, uh, Julie, do you want me to uh, um, show the LTI integration? And Yeah, why don't you go ahead and I will stop sharing and you can go ahead and share your screen and show what all that looks like. Oh. Okay. Um, so first off, I just wanted to uh, refer to this section of the guide, and let me just go to the chat. Um, so uh, to set up the uh, LTI integration with your LMS, Steele referred to some, a lot of our networks currently have the LTI integration set up, and they might just need to um, enable deep linking. So this section of uh, the guide handles uh, setting up the LTI integration. So uh, to register your Pressbooks network. So this chapter of the guide um, is if you've never set up an LTI integration with, between your network and your LMS. If you have previously, but you've never used deep linking, the next chapter uh, helps you set that up. Specifically, it'll be your uh, LMS administrator that, that can do this. So if you have access to your LMS as an administrator role, you can do that. But I know that uh, this is usually uh, a tightly held group that uh, has administrator access. So you'll want, need to get some of their help, but it's a very easy process. Uh, as Steele mentioned, we're here to help. Um, we've got some videos on that process and uh, all the documentations involved. Um, we've got that outlined, um, so it would probably be, for most uh, LMS administrators, a two or three minute job, um, but they just need to enable that uh, deep linking, and then it's an easier experience for instructors. So I'm just going to show within our Canvas courses, um, just quickly, um, how an instructor would use the LTI once that's all set up and, and deep linking is enabled. So they, if I was to set up a... Uh, a new chapter reading, I'm going to add an external tool. So I'm going to choose the Pressbooks content selector. And what this is going to do now is uh, got the, uh, this is giving me a, a, a source to pick from my Pressbooks account. So the books that I have uh, within my account, and I can pick a chapter and you can see here that uh, graded, there's a graded assignment with it and I've set that grading up. And now I just scroll down, I've got too many books, and I select content, 
And now it's going to add that into the Canvas course. So I click Add Item, and there we go. That's added right now. So from a instructor and student perspective, the readings are now all within Canvas. Uh, gone is the, I used to jokingly call it, uh, easy 18-step process to get content out of Pressbooks and into Canvas or your LMS. And now it's a pretty easy process. And more importantly, it's a process that most instructors will be familiar with adding an external tool. So um, they'll have done this with usually with other um, LTI providers. Um, and then when you click on a chapter, uh, what the LTI does is it produces, uh, creates a link uh, to your live web book. And you can see here, um, if I'm in as an instructor, or if you set up students to have access as chapter authors, you can see that they have access now. Uh, and that link between that single sign on link between your LMS and your uh, Pressbooks account is created. So if I wanted to edit the chapter, I could do that here. And I have access to Pressbooks right within the LMS. So I'm going to stop share. And I know uh, that um, first step uh, to using the LTI, and then Julie, if you want to load up the is to ask your LMS administrator to set Pressbooks uh, LTI integration. So um, that might involve an IT or security review. We do that all the time. So uh, let us help with that. Um, if you send, if you need any assistance with that, you can reach out to Pressbooks uh, support, uh, premium support, or to your account manager. If you don't know the account manager, um, email, just email us at sales at pressbooks.com and we'll get going on that uh, security review uh, and, and help out with that. Uh, once it's approved to be added to your LMS, uh, the LTI configuration itself takes about five to 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes at the top end. And uh, as I said, it'll be your LMS administrator that does that. And um, then use any courses and books you have to access uh, quickly and test deep linking. So just to make sure that it's working for instructors, you just want to um, have a, a test course and a book, and you can uh, set that up quickly. That's another five minutes. Uh, and then tell us at Pressbooks when you're ready to turn on results for your network. Premium support will do that. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us at uh, premium support. Um, or if you have any questions now, uh, were there any questions in the chat? Um, yes. Yeah, so there, uh, there's, there's a, a question and some back and forth. Um, so Linda had asked, uh, let me go back to, um, so I know it's not currently, currently set up this way, but I'd like to see a version of your LTI that allows any instructor on my campus to use the tool to bring in Pressbooks content without having them to have permissions in the book or even having a Pressbooks account. Um, and, and so I had asked, help us understand a little bit more the problem you're trying to solve. Um, is it so that people who aren't creating books could use the content and and use Pressbooks results because that is possible. Um, but we have up to this point where the, the, the way that it's structured is that it it needs to know this person uh, in Pressbooks has the ability to bring in content and 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 to do that inside the LMS. And so that's why there is that that account creation, but that's something that can ha happen dynamically through the LTI process as I understand it. Um, Steel, I know you have answered, you've, you've, uh, responded on a couple things. Do you want to pick up? Yeah. And I, I'm going to try to summarize what I think Linda was asking and then make sure that it, that's what Linda was saying. So Linda was saying, okay, let's say I'm an instructor at Michigan State University. I've never used Pressbooks before. I've never written anything in Pressbooks. If I open the content selector, it'll be empty for me. I won't see any choices to bring into the course. What if when I open the content selector, I see every public book made at Michigan State and I could choose to bring that book into my course? Is that 
a good summary of what you're asking for, Linda? Or describe? yeah, that's a that's a pretty good summary. I just am wondering if we can't empower instructors to use the content without me having to be an intermediary and set them up with an account and blah 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 blah. Yeah. Um, that makes we're, sense. We're a big campus. We have a lot of instructors. I don't have relationships with all of them, obviously. Um, but the content is there and it's excellent. Yeah, great. And I think this really comes down to on our side, the technical decision that I think we need to make is when a user in the LMS clicks the content selector, what choices do we show to them? Up to now, we've only said, okay, we'll show you anything that you have access to, but technically, I guess you would have access to a public book. The And it's possible, I don't know, we'd have to go back to our technical and then say, okay, could we technically show them a list of all public books in the content selector? If so, would that potentially be overwhelming? Like, if you well, have- three, Maybe it's possible books. to drill down, so you could see the titles of the full book, and then you drill down to yeah. see the chapters. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of how it works a little bit right now, but that's a pretty interesting idea. I understand the use case, and I think we probably need to talk to others to see whether that's a desired feature, do some user experience stuff. And I know Ricardo, our lead developers here, probably knows the most about the content selector, and Michelle, our UX designer, um, knows the most probably about the user flow there. And and Linda, just to clarify that you're trying to find better ways or ways to make it easier for your instructors, wherever they are, to discover and to recognize here's some content that could be relevant that I might maybe want to bring into my course. Yeah, definitely. And I think, I mean, the results functionality is also built on the fact that it, the instructor has to have a relationship with the book, um, but that... You know, I, I think the first step is to give them access to the content and then think about how to give them access to the results functionality. I'm concerned about the results functionality. Um, if we wanted to expand the number of instructors who can use it, then uh, if they want to customize it, they have to have their own book. Yeah. And that is a separate, I think, problematic issue. Maybe in, not depending on this other question. Yeah, the, the, in terms of managing the total number of books on the network, it, that's uh, as well as exactly, yeah, exactly. And, and training and supporting them to be able to do the adaptation and so forth. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. All right. We can uh, take that. That is an interesting use case. And I, I, like the idea of being able to explore that further and and Michelle um I want to want to actually have our dotted line to Michelle with the kind of on the radar of of user experience things to explore so thank you Linda for that question um any other questions about LTI and uh integration and how that all works okay um, all right. Well, um, that is, those were the main topics that we wanted to uh, discuss with the group today. Um, if we don't have other questions, then we will keep going. Um, we have a, a few items that are coming up in terms of webinars and events. Uh, we have our a couple of just our standard training webinars getting started and advanced press books publishing publishing coming up um, in the next month. Uh, and so the the times and links are there. Um, and uh, and then if anybody's going to be at the OLC Accelerate conference in Orlando, uh, we will be or we are exhibiting there and have a couple of sessions on that agenda. Um, and then uh, we are offering another community webinar. We we did one, what day is it today? We did one on Tuesday this week um, with the uh, folks from the Call Network in Australia, New Zealand, um, talking about their award-winning collaboration work um, around generating uh, OER projects. Um, so the the if anyone missed that one and wants to see it, it was it was interesting and inspiring. And so we'll have the recording for that one available. 
Um, and then we're doing another one around building momentum and impact with your OER uh, programs. And um, we can post links for these uh, in the chat here in a minute. Um, so we have those coming up. Um, thank you, Jen, for posting the link for the, uh, um, the uh, OER webinar. Um, I'm just now I'm just looking in the chat to see if we have any questions or comments that I missed. Um, okay, thank you, Ryan, for your your comment about Linda's suggestion that would be beneficial for adjuncts as well. Um, and uh, yeah, and then the need for network managers to manage the total number of books. Um, so recognizing that that's that's an important concern. Okay. Uh, the next thing is, um, a community round table. So, uh, we haven't had time for this the last couple of product updates because we've had, uh, a lot of other topics and things to talk about. Um, but actually Steele and I were chatting yesterday and, and he mentioned that this is actually historically his favorite part of the product update webinars. And so, um, we'd love to hear anything that um, kind of interesting projects that you're sharing, interesting topics. Uh, uh, you know, so what's what's keeping you busy and occupied and what are you proud of lately that your your teams have been doing? Anyone want to jump in? Cheryl. Um, we've had a, a unusual situation and thank you to Steele and Thomas for um, their support dealing with it. But some bad actors have uh, been using our Pressbooks network to share links to pirated movies. So for the past two weekends, um, they've uh, added a bunch of files. Um, first time it was 144 files of PDFs to a media library. Uh, the next time it was with a different user account and 320 files um, to a, a media library. Uh, working with our Office of uh, uh, Tech Safety, um, they've pinpointed that these were probably fake student accounts that were used since we limit uh, Pressbooks enrollments to um, Arizona.edu accounts. Uh, but Thomas helped me identify some suspicious Gmail accounts that were in our network as well. So Steele said he's not aware of anybody else that this has happened to. So I guess we just got lucky. We were alerted to it by a strange DCMA uh, takedown notice from Spain which we at first thought was a phishing thing. And then we started investigating and no, sure enough, we had all of these Disney and other movies. Disney's the last person you want to have content, illegal content from on your network. So um, yeah, this has been keeping me busy trying to stay ahead of these people and, and figure out how they're getting in and how to stop it. So for the time being, we've um, turned off our unmediated press book signups. But uh, just wanted to share that in case anybody else <laughs> falls victim to these shenanigans. I will say, I mean, we, we haven't seen other enterprise clients that struggled with this, but in the past, Cheryl, this was one of the biggest problems with that old pressbooks.com network. We used to let anyone in the world sign up, create books for free, and like 95% of the stuff on there was spam. It was like, oh no, this is why you can't have nice things on the internet. And so... You said, okay, you can't make your book public. And still 60% of this stuff was spam. And and it's, yeah, there's uh, people, the, unfortunately, a lot of people trying to exploit edge cases and loopholes. And I'm sorry that happened to your network. Any questions for Cheryl about this, uh, this uh, sad nightmare she's been living through? All right, well, thank you for sharing and um, let us know how we can continue to support it. And kudos to Thomas for the um, support and assistance that you've been providing. We appreciate that. All right, other things to share? Hi. Go ahead, Sarah. So, hi, yeah, I'm from Cali. Um, we create open access and free case books. 
Um, traditionally, we released them in Word and PDF and eBooks, and we made a print version. Our newest books are actually built in Pressbooks because we have been taking advantage of the H H H5P interactive questions. Um, and this was a really great meeting because we have gotten questions from faculty about whether or not it is uh, 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 compatible with their LMS system. So um, we wouldn't uh, actually be the ones to be using LMS systems. However, we've gotten those questions. So I imagine I should just send them off to their LMS administrators. Um, like you said, if they have this question and then go from there, I took a note to, to set up the Pressbooks LTI integration. That's uh, That's what I should just tell them to do. <laughs> Yeah, and to, to clarify, Sarah, like yeah. the way that the LTI works is the learning management system at their institution has to connect with the Pressbooks networks that's hosting the content. Okay, okay. So in your we're case... We're the ones hosting the content. And yeah, so, you would need to say, are yeah. we willing to create LTI connections for every one of these people who want to use our content? Got if it. not, then you can say, uh, we don't, we're not doing that, but here's the public link. You can just put the link to the public book in your course. It wouldn't be an LTI connection, but it would be the, the course content. Or if you have your own Pressbooks network, that would be the place at your institution to make the LTI connection. You're welcome to copy or clone our content to your network where you do have the LTI connection. That's probably what might work Wonderful. for you. Thank yeah. you for the clarification. Appreciate it. All right. And Sarah, feel free to reach out if you have other questions. Um, uh, you can send a note to premium support and they are, they're eager to help with that. So. Thanks. Um, other, uh, other things you want to share, Lauren, <laughs> I saw you, you turn on your screen. Does that mean you want to say something? I did. Yeah, I was, thank you for, <laughs> um, I was going to raise my hand. Yeah, I think this is more of a like question. Um, we have been um, sort of uh, working on our relationship with our campus bookstore and uh, myself and our new open educational resources librarian on our Bothell campus here are about to do a presentation, kind of an update for library staff here on um, kind of new things happening at the bookstore and some of the like data that we're now receiving from them. And I'm curious um, about um, like having a better understanding on our campus of like where courseware is being used and um, and versus, you know, ebooks or even print books that the libraries might purchase for copies of in our collection or for reserves. Like how basically how to kind of use that information about courseware to maybe do some targeted marketing of Pressbooks results in departments that don't currently um, use Pressbooks or use OER <laughs> um, because uh, results is sort of the, you know, OER alternative to um, homework integration systems and proprietary systems like that. So this is just a long-winded way of saying that I'm starting to think about that now that we have sort of better information on um, departments that are using that, what systems they're using, just sort of like into the future, um, how we might like market Pressbooks results or talk to faculty about Pressbooks results um, in a really targeted way. So I, I, yeah, just putting that out there as like a future, um, thing that I would be interested in talking with others in this network about. Yeah, thank you. I I um, would be interested in, I, so I have a couple of ideas that I'll share and it would be great to, um, I think this is one of those areas where having more people interested in this talking and sharing ideas would be helpful. So um, uh, one of the ways to look at this is to, um, so, one of the, a, a great starting point is to look at introductory courses like um, uh, Introduction to Psychology, for example. So uh, there've been some of our clients, like one in particular that comes to mind is University of Central Florida, where they've got the OpenStax Lumen uh, Intro to Psych textbook, which is quite well regarded. They've put a lot of effort into H5P activities with some great instructional design support on that. And so finding, the first step is finding a book 
that the department will be comfortable with that already, if possible, already has a lot of the, the interactivity work done in it. And so identifying where are those good resources and then as you're targeting um, those courses, it, being able to share with them, here's what others are doing. You could take this and adapt it or, you know, kind of use it as is. You can make it your own. Um, so that's one place. Um, and, uh, and, and often when you're like, if you, if you can get some people to start with sort of that introductory level or a few people where there's a lot of sections, have some of them, if they have a few hand raisers willing to try it out and see how it works. Um, and, and, and go from there. Um, it, we have, uh, there are some teams doing introductory Spanish um, as, a, as another area. And, and one of the things that now that we're getting more use of Pressbooks results, um, one of the things we want to do is surface, these are books that people are using successfully with Pressbooks results. Um, uh, we'll want to get instructors like buy in to say, yeah, we're comfortable if you put this out there, but we've talked about doing a collection um, of those to give people like you, Lauren, here's some books that are already kind of tried and tested with Pressbooks results um, that give people some ideas of a starting point. Um, so those are some ideas, um, but I'd love, it would be great to have more um, input from the community. And if others are interested in that, we could certainly facilitate some conversations and dialogue on that. Thank you, that's all super helpful. All right, Steele. I was gonna ask, I, I hope I don't put people on the spot, but open ed was just recently, uh, was just held recently. And there there are at least three people here who gave pres presentations that I went to that I thought were especially great. And I was wondering, uh, Ollie, would you be willing to say a little bit about the uh, the what to do with the data presentation that you gave? I think that'd be really interesting to a lot of people. And then maybe Jen, if you're interested, the um, radical OER one, I think that would also probably be really interesting to folks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Rain, uh, who's the Open Education Librarian at University of Oregon, and I presented about um, how we went from having sort of no data into developing a uh, data management process and plan, um, and then actually implementing um, after we started publishing some uh, data visualizations about how we started actually getting those in front of eyes because we found that that was sort of our biggest challenge was actually getting people to engage with our data and use it. Um, and so we started in, um, integrating it into our uh, college-wide program review process. Um, and so uh, that's been pretty successful and we're still sort of like seeing where that's going to go, but we've been really excited about trying to get our data sets and our dashboards into processes that already exist on campus instead of trying to give faculty just like another place to engage with some additional data set. Um, and we've been really happy with that. So yeah, and I'm very uh, interested in the data analysis and uh, visualization side. So if anyone is working on those kinds of projects and wants to connect or collaborate, feel free to shoot me an email. Yeah, and I'm happy to talk about um, my presentation of reframing OER as a radical act. Um, so, so, so it was a fairly dense presentation that I got through very quickly. Um, but to, to sum up briefly, I kind of talked about the ways in which OER can be a really important tool for filling a lot of pedagogical gaps when it comes to kind of more critical race theory and things like that. And some of the ways that, some of the simple sort of ways we can encourage um, faculty to take that on as they're engaging with OER. Um, so I talked about how, you know, when we when we discuss OER, we often put a very strong emphasis on costs and how it saves money and things like that, which is very important in terms of like, you know, uh, getting rid of financial barriers in the classroom, but it can also be a bit reductive because, you know, there are so many other ways in which OER can transform the classroom, right? It can we can use it as a tool to increase marginalized authorship. We can use it as a tool to increase conversations around DEIA. Um, we can use it in so many different incredible ways other than, you know, cost reduction. So one of the ways that we do that at the University of Delaware, where I work, is when we uh, we encourage faculty who apply for, you know, authoring grants or faculty who apply for a Prosperic account with us to have some sort of DEIA, DEIA angle when they're applying and to kind of, you know, be able to articulate that somewhat. And we don't make this a strict barrier, but this is something that we do encourage. 
Um, and then another consideration I explored was um, trying to resist the urge to fall into feminine workplace routines in which we expect um, a lot of extra work upon um, ourselves and other librarians to do OER work, which is a very common thing that we consider in feminine workplaces to have this expectation of doing extra work, extra labor. And so that we should instead aspire towards a feminist uh, labor uh, kind of model and like really take care that we are, you know, sharing the workload and that we aren't overwhelming people and, and making this an extra thing that people have to do on top of their uh, their jobs and things like that. So that's briefly um, kind of the things I discussed. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Um, so we also have Cheryl. I have to drop off at the top of the hour because I have another call that I need to go to. But Cheryl, can we put you on the spot to just talk briefly about your presentation? Uh, uh sh sh me, me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, sorry, I, I used your, your maiden name. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I can look for a link. Uh, oh, thanks, Steele. Sorry, I was um saving notes and <laughs> wasn't paying attention to this chat. Yes, so um, the recording, um, I encourage you to listen to. It was a collaborative presentation with um, folks from across the country, not so much about the o Open Pedagogy Toolkit, but about our process and really centering on care and community and, um, and, and not feeling this fear and pressure to do more and artificial deadlines. And uh, my collaborators shared some really nice uh, agenda tools um, with mindfulness aspects. And uh, yeah, we had some nice feedback on the session. So thanks for highlighting that. Thank you. All right, we are at the top of the hour, so we're going to let everybody go. But thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing. And again, reach out if we can be helpful in any way. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.